Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. We're at VMworld 2015, and one of the big things we're seeing at VMworld 2015 is data centers of all sizes want to kind of develop this sort of web scale mentality, especially as it comes to storage infrastructure. Well, the problem is, is that getting that web scale mentality in today's traditional storage systems, both primary and secondary, is really hard to accomplish. So we're going to talk about some ways you can get there. To help me with that conversation, I've asked Sean Darrington. He's the Senior Director of Products at Exablox. Sean, thanks for joining us yeah, today. Yeah, thanks, George. Great to be here. Great. So why don't you take us through what you got here? Yeah, so you know, one of the main problems that we hear time and again, especially here at VMworld, is that companies want to spend less time managing storage. And so they try to model themselves after like Amazon S3 and really the web scale companies that have a lot of the budget and the expertise and just pure numbers of people to develop on how do you scale out their storage to massive multi-petabyte or even in some cases exabyte scale. Right, most companies don't have PhDs on staff to design their web scale architecture, right? Exactly, and yeah. so what they're faced with, okay, so what do I do? The historical way is to answer that with a scale up architecture where as an organization I have to figure out am I going to go with the small version, the medium version, or the right. large version and figure out some capacity planning and for most of us we never get it right. Right. And that poses a challenge for how do I spend so much money up front to get the better deal, but then what if I get it wrong? And that really isn't the way that web scale companies operate. The way that they want to operate is taking smaller building blocks, ideally commodity components at the lowest cost possible, mm -hmm. and add as you need to without disrupting the applications or the users that are accessing that storage. Okay. So that's really what we've done is we've taken that approach of scaling out okay. and really brought it to every organization where they don't need PhDs, they can actually do and buy exactly the storage they need and grow over time non-disruptively. Well, why don't you show us a little bit what that looks like? Yeah, so uh, one blocks is a uh, 2U appliance okay. and that's the building block. So every one blocks here has a certain amount of capacity and we actually let customers choose the types of drives, capacity as well as types, SAS, SATA, or multi-terabyte from one to eight terabyte in a single 2U appliance and they can build that storage over time. And so here, instead of buying everything up front, and then overspending to get the best deal. Right. There's some price performance curve of how am I going to get enough performance out of what I need, but if I wind up buying the small one today, but I actually needed the medium one, now I'm faced with a forklift upgrade. Gotcha. So the one blocks, what we do is we actually allow customers to scale over time. They can start with exactly what they need and over time add as they grow. So I can start with like one, one node or one system and I don't even have to fill it up all the way with drives is what you're saying. Exactly. You okay. can start with wow. a single 2 appliance and as little as three disk drives okay. and grow to a petabyte scale ring, a petabyte scale single file system okay. that your applications and users can use without ever changing anything. And over time, as you do that, you simply plug them in and they auto-discover and they automatically add that capacity to the existing file system and your Veeam backup infrastructure that saw 100 terabytes today would see 200 terabytes tomorrow and you never have to reconfigure that application. Huh. Well, that's even different than a lot of scale-out architectures because a lot of scale-out architectures make you start at like three or four nodes just to get started. And for you know medium-sized data centers, that may be more capacity. They're in the same basic situation as the top, right? Exactly. They may even be more in capacity or they have multiple locations, right? Right, good point. And so it's a combination of a lot of times you have to start with three in a legacy scale out architecture, or you're even based upon RAID, where you now you have to think about how many building blocks am I getting, but then how many LUNs and volumes and how do I assign that to a given file system, and how many file systems do I have in my scale-out architecture. With us, you have a global pool of storage. You can really think about managing the capacity and not worry about application A growing faster than I expected and application B growing slower than I expected, so now I have to go through a lot of lab laborious uh, storage tasks. Well, and, and it, you also mentioned kind of a, a pet peeve of mine is RAID, right? And so let's talk about uh, how we manage RAID now, because obviously we, we want to have a very high capacity here and things like that, but I got to have some data protection. How do you guys get around the fact that a six terabyte drive could take you know a few days to a week to rebuild? Yeah, so that's right, uh, George. We actually don't use RAID. Oh, okay. we, we look like network attached storage on the front end. So we look like NFS and SMB to all of your applications. Okay. But under the covers, we've actually written our own object store. So we're using what the web scale companies do to exactly do how they grow right. by using objects. Okay. So now we can manage objects very differently than you manage ones and zeros in a volume. We can move those objects anywhere we want to. So now when you're looking at a, at a ring architecture, as you start to scale and you add multiple one blocks here, we support today up to seven one blocks in a given ring. So it's a bas basically a petabyte of effective storage capacity in a single file system. Okay. And so in this environment where you have multiple disk drives and you get to choose which ones you'd like, if you have a disk drive fail here, 
What we do is we actually protect against two disk drive failures or two entire one box failures in a ring. So theoretically, when you lose a disk drive here, you can actually lose two disk drives or two entire one blocks. Now, if you lose two entire one blocks, that could translate to 24 actual disk drives. Huh. But okay. all the information is still available in the remaining five nodes of the ring or three nodes of the ring, depending on how many you started with. And are you using some sort of a, like a mirroring or a replication process to get that data protection done? Exactly. We use a replication process. We okay. replicate every object three times. Okay. And so we'll put it on different disk drives or different one blocks. And so coming back here to where you may start with three one blocks in a given ring, when you grow to five or seven and larger numbers in the future, mm -hmm. we, because we're object-based, you don't have to reconfigure anything. That file system just looks bigger, and in the background, we move all those objects to the greatest possible extent to protecting that across oh. multiple one blocks. Now, my guess would be, since you're using that kind of a protection methodology, I could also mix different drive sizes as my ring kind of grows up, so to speak. Exactly. You can mix different drive types here with any single one blocks, or across one blocks, you can decide how you want to do that. And we actually have a lot of customers that buy 4312s, the one block's 4312, they'll buy a three node ring today, mm -hmm. they'll half populate all of them with six terabyte drives, waiting for the eight terabyte drive prices to come down. Right. And if you look at just six terabyte drives from February of last year at 600 plus dollars, uh -huh. they're now $250. Right. So, no other storage vendor is going to give you a 50% discount on your drives in 12 plus months. Right. Well, and also, it, it, that's pretty typical. Like, the, the next capacity down sometimes is the best price per gigabyte. Yep. The, the highest capacity is like the most expensive, right? So, exactly. Okay. Now, how about data services? You know, that's becoming more important. We see people talk about that a lot. Where does that fit into your guys' picture? Yeah. So, if you think about this, this is just, you know, let's just call this. Um, this is my VMworld ring, right? So okay. of this global file system, I can carve up multiple NFS exports or multiple SMB shares to use for different home directories, archiving, video serving, um, take your pick of you know, backup repository, right? right? Different purposes. But having said that, what was really important about how do you not only protect that information, which we talked about with the replication, but now for what we also have um, is we have compression. Okay. We've always had uh, inline deduplication and continuous data protection. Okay. Now, remote replication uh, is also available, but that doesn't apply to an individual ring. That applies to multiple rings. You want to get the data off-site, right? Makes sense. So, you know, when you look at compression, we do all this inline. And so now you think about storage services on a per-share basis. Right? Okay. So for my backup application, yeah, I'm going to enable compression, but I'm not going to enable continuous data protection for the snapshots. I'm going to let my backup app manage that retention policy. Okay. But for other primary data, I may want to actually invoke compression and continuous data protection. Okay. And the deduplication is actually global, so that applies to everything. So if you have share A, B, and C across multiple applications, because everything is object-based, we can deduplicate everything essentially for free based upon our object store underneath the covers. Okay. So let's wrap with this. What are the primary use cases? Where are you guys seeing a lot of traction? What are the big problems you guys are solving? So the big problem that we're solving is a couple different areas. Number one is a disk-based backup recovery target for okay. Veeam, NetBackup, Backup Exec, Unitrends. Take your pick. Right? We look like SIFs or SMB. And so today, you can start with whatever you need and grow from there without reconfiguring that. Okay. The other is like imaging, PAX applications. A lot of higher ed universities are using us to scale out capacity for the research. Uh, MIT and others are using us because we can remove the opportunity, or I should say, the limitation of a forklift upgrade when I've got sure. a four-year-old technology that's now based upon volumes. With us, you can upgrade and just literally remove the one blocks and everything is rebalanced to the background. Well, and especially on a data type that you have to keep for a very long period of time. Yep. Do you, do you guys do data integrity type of checking as well then? We do. We do a couple things. Number one, the data integrity of everything that's written in, because it's a file being written in and because we're object-based, that actually becomes a hash. That's okay. a fixed number that we know based upon our index and what's physically written to the disk drive. So every time we read that back, we compare that to the original right. copy of that. And if those hashes do not match, we go to the second or the third copy. So gotcha. you're always going to be getting back the information that you originally wrote to. Which is critical in that sort of hospital type of environment. Right? It is. You know, eliminating bit rot and the undetectable error sure. rates of drives, right? And so if you look at those higher eds and the um, uh, applications for backup recovery, they're all price sensitive, right? Lots right. of capacity. Some of them dedupe, some of them compress, others don't. And so what we do is, in addition to the mix and match of drives, what's really appealing to the customers is the fact that they can bring their own drives at retail pricing. And if you look at how we scale over time, customers can always look to a decline price curve of what they're going to pay for the storage because starting today even at today's prices for a single ring with seven nodes at a petabyte effective capacity 
people can buy this at 14 cents a gig list. Wow, that's impressive. Okay, great. Well, Sean, thanks for joining us on the whiteboard today. Yeah, great to be here, thanks. Thank you. So I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.